I don't know if you're even seeing this. If you are, congratulations. <laughs> YouTube hates me, so say hi. YouTube hates everybody right YouTube now. YouTube hates so. everybody right now. It's a pain in the butt. We may or may not be writing a song that we think is gonna be pretty epic be and might just go viral and um, we'll see. But, hi, welcome to Educating Shanny. Hi, I'm Shanny. Sh oh, jeez. I'm Shanny. <laughs> It's okay. You have a concussion, Amanda. No, it's not a concussion. See, Gigi said you could get a concussion too. I didn't hit my head. Yeah, but you tense up your whole body. Yeah. Whiplash, at least. No, just. Anyway, if you're if you're new, welcome. I'm Shani, and I am recovering from an eating disorder. Hi, Shani. Hi. Um. So Danny got in a car accident, and <laughs> we wanted to tell you about it. So why don't you tell him the story? I didn't. I don't want to tell anybody anything. Okay. I'm gonna botch it up, but I'll try. Okay, he was driving on the freeway. He was going 87 miles per hour, and this guy on a bike came right up to him and sideswiped his entire truck, and his truck flew into the air, <coughs> and it rolled down a cliff, and then he died, and then was reincarnated as himself. But I didn't get a concussion. True. Did I tell it right? Keep close enough. Your turn. So I was driving to a set that I was building, uh, trucks full of stuff, and I had a trailer full of stuff too. Tell him, he has this ginormous beast of a truck. It's like a yeah, Suburban. It's a Suburban. And then and he has this suburban. huge And I just bought a brand trailer. new, not brand new, brand new to me trailer for this job so I can haul big stuff back and forth from the site. Because he's building sets and props. Yep. And so I, I took a load up the day before yesterday and, the, and it was fine. There's a really bad part in our I-15 road uh, right there in Lehigh. And those of you who are around here, you know exactly where that crap... Anyway, I lots of road damage. Even though It's under construction. But you're... I mean, they have... You're going... It's 60 miles an hour. They knocked it down to 60. I'm going 55 because I have a trailer and I'm like, I'm going to be safe. I see... What? Not to mention, sorry to keep interrupting, okay. that sharp turn that that's around the thing. Mm -hmm. You ever notice how it's a cliff on the other side? Oh yeah. You could totally roll. Like it gives you a really sharp turn. Yeah. And if you roll, you'll roll down a whole cliff. So <clears throat> really cool. Good job, Utah. So I'm paying very close attention to the cars around me and everything like that. I see a, I, I don't actually remember if I see the bump or anything, but I just remember yeah. the, tra I looked in the rear view mirror cause the trailer all of a sudden jumped from this bump. So I hit the hit this divot, whatever the hell, pothole, whatever you want to call that it. That shouldn't be on a freeway. Yeah. Are you kidding? That's so dangerous. It, it bumped my trailer up, it came down, the axle broke. So here's my trailer and now, so here's the axle. Now here's, here's the axle and all I hear was screeching tires and banging and then all of a sudden I look in the rear mirror and my trailer is swinging out this way into the lane next to me. It tags this poor guy he freaks out and overcorrects, and he actually smashes into a U-Haul that was somewhere in the mix. I don't even, I don't even know. All I was trying to do is get this piece of sh crap over to the side of the road now to try and make it safe. But the guy tags a U-Haul truck, and then the U-Haul keeps going, kind of gets out of the way, and then he keeps skidding, and he hits me uh, in uh, in the front of my truck, just on the on the driver corner of the where the bumper is, busts my lights out, whatever. I get over, he's in the way, all I-15 northbound shut down for probably 40 minutes while we... It's all over the you know, news. He can't steer very well because his whole front end is smashed in, his car's total pretty much. The cop had to get behind him and push him, and I'm stopping traffic from an on-ramp that's right there, so we're right in the middle of an on-ramp as well. So it's just a freaking nightmare. Trailer's jacked up, they're like, we just need to get this out of here, can you just pull it to the side? I'm like, yep. So I just put it in gear and just haul that piece of crap to the side and it was screeching and burning up and did you get to the a gas station or something yeah so they they called two tow trucks in one for my trailer one for the smash car um and then we wanted to get off the highway because we we're making a scene so we all drove down to the next off ramp and everything and figured it all out from there so by the way um did an ambulance ever come to check you out no, because because when the cop came in, he's like, "Is anyone hurt?" And he checked the other guy. He checked me. He's like, "Is anyone hurt at all?" And we're like, "No, we were just super shooken up." Well, so. I want to know what you guys think about this because I was telling Giggy this story last night, and she was like, "No matter what, if the cops are called, an ambulance has to come where they live in Australia." 
She says, why don't they do that there? Like, if you have to call the cops just, for something, an ambulance has to be there, too, no, we, to check you out it's and just stuff. Not, it's just not necessary when there's no injuries. If, if one of us had said there's an, there's an injury or whatever, because I, I called 911. I'm like, hey, we are just an accident. Mm -hmm. And she immediately said, are there any injuries? And I said, no. But by that time, the UHP had already showed up. I'm like, oh, hey, the guy's here already. So, yeah. I mean, they, they asked several times. The dispatch asked and the, and the police officer who was really nice this we got some good officers around here we do we um, really he's do. really nice he's just like hey guys this is this is a crappy situation but let's get this figured out he was patient and he was like i i was i was a mess i'm still a freaking mess but i was even more of a mess because he's asking me to like draw stuff and he's asking me to write down a statement i don't even know if my my writing was legible i was okay. like it was it was crap. I even tried to send a text to the guys that I was trying to deliver the stuff for. I could not deliver. I couldn't so he write the me. damn text. Like, he called me and he's like, "Can you please text them for can me?" You text these guys. I'm so sorry. This I can't write. I was I'm a mess. I'm a freaking and mess. Danny, right? who I'm is a freaking. I know it's okay. <sighs> You're doing great. Danny's such a um, Danny's such a good worker and he hates disappointing people. So his very first concern was, "Oh my gosh, these people aren't going to get their set in time and and they're going to." tarnished my name around Utah and I'm not going to be known anymore as like the best prop builder in Utah and blah 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 and I was like sweetie these things happen so I text them it's a married couple and told them what happened and they were like oh my gosh yeah take whatever time you need these things happen so he's and I'm proud of him I'm proud of him for taking this time um I made him come right home and I've made him just whatever makes him comfortable watching movies playing games he definitely has some, can I say it all? What? Yeah, tell one. He sure. definitely is going through some pretty severe PTSD that... I'm pretty sure I'm um, still in shock because my body will go... I mean, he's numb been... Numb and heavy and my brain hurts and everything hurts. He's been um, very fragile since last night. And he woke up probably five times last night and just came into wherever I was and just started crying and then I would go into his room with him and lay down with him and and sing to him and tickle his back and he'd be okay for a minute, then he'd fall asleep and then he would redream that it happened again and it would wake him back up. Because I mean, listen, if you don't, even if you don't have, you know, huge injuries, like you don't have huge injuries, the shock of it and your body, as we both know from pre previous crashes, your body tenses very much to the point of like pain. Like it feels like you just did a week's worth of workouts in one minute. Like that's how much your body tenses. And so he's definitely hurting everywhere. His legs are hurting, his arms, his neck. Um, but I've never seen this from him before. And everybody was okay, by the way. Everyone's no okay. No injuries here, no injuries the other mm -hmm. guy or the U-Haul truck. Everybody, yeah. everybody completely walked away from that with yeah. no problem. So yeah. that was really good. So he just is amazing and he's a trooper and I'm so grateful that he's alive and you you tried driving today we went I out tried. to run some got, errands I got around the block he got around the block and, and then, just and then all of a sudden just tried pulled to cut over us the off. car I'm like, I can't do this right now yeah someone tried to cut us off so he freaked out and he just pulled over and he didn't even say anything <laughs> he just pulled over <laughs> and did his belt opened the door and I was like yep that's my cue so I opened my door I don't even think we said anything we to each other anything. it was like we just both knew what he needed in that moment so I took over and um, yeah, he's breaking my heart today. It's so sad, but you are just so brave and strong and beautiful. And I'm really, really proud of you because your skills that you have, Danny has street skills. Danny has survival skills. He always has with everything. And so he was able to control the truck to make sure it didn't roll, to make sure it didn't hit anybody else, pull it over safely like that. That stuff's really hard to do. Like our wedding day one, that was terrible. <laughs> it was funny because, I mean, I think I've told this story online a long time ago of our wedding day car crash, but basically what happened was um, we had just gotten married and we had gotten sealed, which in our church means um, basically married forever, for eternity. So we're with each other forever, you know? and you have to get it done inside of one of our temples and it's really cool and blah, blah, blah. Um, but we were driving home and we had the crash and I just started screaming and I was like, 
while he was trying to pull over the car, I was just screaming like, it's okay, we just got sealed, we just got married, we'll be together again. And he's over there being like, shut up, I'm trying to save our life, shut up, stop saying stuff like that. <laughs> so he just knew what to do and he'd never been in a crash at that point, right? That was your first one and he knew, it, he took over. I thought we were gonna die. It felt like we were getting in the most horrible plane crash in the world and he just knew what to do. He's so, so, so good at that with anything in life. He just, he could survive anything, anywhere. He's amazing. I'm really proud of him. So he's definitely dealing with some stuff that I'm, I would love to hear from you guys. He would too. Um, I, I mean, I already told him this. I wasn't gonna tell him this, but he made me tell him this last night <laughs> or today that last night after he got home from the crash and he, um, cause I've been trying to hide how it made me feel cause I didn't want to put any extra stress on him. So like I left to, to go to the store to get some stuff for dinner and I called my mom and just collapsed on her and cried and, um, and no, don't feel bad. This isn't meant to feel bad, I'm just saying. And she said the same thing about my stepdad. My stepdad also got in a really bad wreck on that same freeway and he was the same way. I mean, Danny was pacing around the room. He couldn't hold still, he'd be shaking. And then all of a sudden he'd want to snuggle and just snuggle into my neck and it was the cutest thing ever, I'm not gonna lie. And then he'd be shaking again and then he would <coughs> be laughing and then he would, like it just was a lot. So I had to call my mom and be like, what is going on? And she's like, that's shock, that's trauma, that's PTSD. So it's normal, honey, it's normal, but He's been feeling bad about it, which he shouldn't. I just think that it would help if we could hear other experiences that are similar out there to let him know that he's not the only one that reacts that way. Because just because just you're not hurt physically like that doesn't mean you're not hurting. Also, I have a question. If it, are any of you lawyers or no lawyers? Yeah. Because... We I, don't sue people, I but... Don't, I don't like even the thought of it. Yeah. But... That totally, while the blame was put on me because it was my trailer that I was hauling, it was the freaking road that made it, made it what what happened. That's the road's fault. It wasn't even my fault. It was it was it was road. Well, and I can't tell you how many times we've turned on the news and where are all of the wrecks? Yeah, where right, are all the problems? Yeah, that right exact there. pass, right called, around the corner of the mountain. Her know. She's like, oh yeah, I avoid that area. She avoids yeah. a complete mm -hmm. area of I, I do too. and takes. 30 minutes extra just to go around it, which is kind of what that's I'm what I do too. That's too. why I do not drive up to Salt Lake because like you have to take that. I hate it. I hate it. It's the worst. So I want to know if I can have a case to go after the city or, or UDOT or yeah. whoever the hell I need to go after mm -hmm. just to cover all this bull crap because it's. He got a ticket so for. What was your ticket for? Uh, not being able to maintain my lane. Because the, Which wasn't your fault, because the thing yeah, but it's, it is my bump fault on the fast it's my freeway. It's, it's just, it's just what it is. I'm, I don't care about the trap. I don't care about the ticket that much. I mean, I, I do, know, but I'm saying. But what I care about more is all the damage that it caused. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's I shouldn't. And it made you miss a day of work, and then the, and the next now. day, yeah, it'll be three and four days now too. Yeah. Anyway. I'm sorry, honey. Well, I'm proud of you for. Thanks. Hey, I'm really proud of you that you took the rest of the weekend off. I know how hard that is for you. He hates letting people down, but you're not letting them down. They were so nice. They text they back. Really nice. They even text again today and they're like, how are you feeling? How are you doing? And Danny was like, I'm really messed up. I'm kind of real messed up here. And, and she's like, well, just take your time. It's okay. We're not in a hurry. She was really, really sweet. If you happen to be watching, thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. Um, They're just such, such sweet people. And maybe this was Heavenly Father's way of being like, Danny, you need a break. You want to know what kind of bites me in the butt a little bit? Because <laughs> I, 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 I haul trailers all the time. And I always see and hear about like the, the bad things that happen with trailers, like people losing their loads and stuff. So I make mm -hmm. sure all my stuff is completely he does. locked down. Mm -hmm. I triple, double, He takes an check. hour before he leaves to yeah, make how long, sure everything. How long was I out there rigging the truck, the trailer? Probably 45 minutes. Right? Like I make, like, I mean, their big stuff is like a couch and some tubing and stuff like that. And I was mm -hmm. making sure I didn't want anything to happen. And when I got in the highway, I'm like, you know what? I'm even gonna say a prayer and just ask Heavenly Father, hey, let me get up there okay with this stuff. Just 
just because I didn't want anything falling out or making a mess. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't 20 minutes later that that it happened. And I was really, like, I... I you were mad at God. I was, I was, I don't want to say mad, but I'm like, <laughs> you, know but, how, you know how someone, when they're like, hey, I love you, and they kind of like give you a smack, like, you know, mm -hmm. like, wake up kind of mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. That's what it felt like. Like I Well, felt, that's probably I, what it was. I, I really hate to say it like this, but I felt like I got a little bit bitch slapped from God. Like, <laughs> psh, like, what the hell? I prayed I was doing, I did all the right stuff. I know that's terrible to say, and it's probably just the, the <laughs> no filter stress that I'm talking to. Right now. I know that's terrible. D delete that. You Honey, know, God that, doesn't bitch slap people. Well, it, it felt like that. It really did. Because I'm like, seriously, Here's I got thing. over, and like, honestly, the first thought, I'm like, okay, I'm not dead. What the hell was that? Well, here's the thing. Like, what? I just prayed to have this not happen. What are you doing? Look at it this way. Look at it this I way. I miss the pothole by six inches either way. You could, you could do that. I know you could do that. I'm so pissed. Look at it this way, though. I think he was helping you because he was like, this boy has not been sleeping, not been eating, not been taking care of himself. He's I have been, been killed. Okay, maybe not all the way, but still. You've you been don't killing have to give yourself you don't lately. Have to wreck the whole damn. I know, to... but maybe that's that's why you survived. That's why there aren't injuries. He don't wanted to wrong. give you a wake up call and be like, Danny, you need a damn weekend off. Except he probably didn't say damn. But that's what, he, that's, yeah. This is the only way you would take time off because you do not take time off ever. No matter how sick you are, no matter how whatever. So it's, it's. Remember, trials are blessings in disguise. I say it all the time because trials are what makes us stronger. So you're gonna come out of this even stronger and now you're gonna be like the best driver in the world and you're gonna work even harder on your next project and impress even more people. Everything you do is so great and everybody loves you. There's a, he's like first, he's become the top guy in Utah for prop and set design, yeah, yeah. People are, he's having to turn down jobs every week because he gets multiple offers every week. He's incredible. You're so, so talented, honey. And these things happen and I'm just glad that you're safe. Thanks. So thank you for all the well wishes and prayers and leave some encouraging comments below. And if you have any advice, if you've been through something like this where you survived a horrific car crash and no injuries, but mentally, um, it's been rough. He's been a different person since yesterday. It's so weird. I just think, that's why I think you could have a concussion or whiplash or something. It's just stress. I it's guess just it's just cool. stress it's and just... shock. But you weren't like this on our wedding day, were you? Well, we had a wedding to get to. I was already stressed out from that. We had a reception to get to, which we were late to. And then when we got to our, we got to our reception late, and everyone had been waiting, so they like clapped when we walked in. And then we stood in our line, and the line went, Mom, Rob, me, Danny, Danny's parents. So my mom was the first one everyone would talk to when they would go through the line to talk to us. So my mom would t tell them what happened. Rob would then tell them more details of what happened. And then by the time they got to me and Danny, it wasn't, hey, congratulations, you got married. It's, hey, congratulations, you're not dead. <laughs> so. Which that, we still appreciate it. Yeah, it was so cool. I just think it's cool. <laughs> I think it's cool that our reception turned into more than just a marriage celebration. It was like a celebration that we're alive and everyone's alive and everyone's grateful to have their families. And I am so grateful that Danny's alive beyond all the things. And I called him and I FaceTimed him and I made him let me say a prayer because he was really shaken up. So I'm like, close your damn eyes. I'm going to say a prayer. And we just thank Heavenly Father because I'm so grateful that you're alive. And you did great. And you're okay. And we're going to work it all out, okay? Okay. Want to say anything else? No. Thank you guys for your support and love. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. You mean it. You're really sweet. Do you want to go play Mario? Which one are we going to play? Free? Okay. Sounds good. Do you want to send Stogan off? Okay. All right. Well, I love you guys. I'll see you next time for another video. Um, the next video you'll see will be the pumpkin carving. And I think I'm going to throw in, no, just the pumpkin carving. And then after that, 
you will see the final episode of Decluttering Shanny, where we cleaned a bulimic's bathroom. How was that for you, Danny? Do you remember? It was like two months ago. Still haven't put it up. But it's coming. I'm working on it. So, all right. I love you guys. I'll see you next time. And remember forever and always that you're beautiful. You're worth it. And I am too. We love you so much. Thank you for watching. Bye. Okay, bye.